Jive Hive Jeff from Two Hacks Garage. Well, as you can see, that is not a Pontiac. That's not a Ford. It is a boat, but it's got a motor and it goes fast. So what are we doing as an automotive channel working with the boat? Well, as you saw in a previous video, stopped by a friend of mine's, and he was also working on a boat. Well, Kyle, he happens to have a boat not too far from us. There's a really large, about 8,000 acre man-made lake. A lot of people go boating there. Not too far from here, there's a smaller lake, primarily used for fishing. So there's a lot of areas to boat around here. So Kyle's got a cobalt here, and he hasn't had it very long, and he's been working on upgrading some stuff. And one of the things he really wanted to upgrade was the flooring in it. He wanted to make sure it's grippy, it doesn't mold, and it looks nice. So he went through a company called Gator Step. Gator Step makes like this foam style material that's really grippy, doesn't really mold, and it lasts. And it, most importantly, it stays stuck down. So this winter, him and I have been going through and making these templates through the company just to get this right. It's a lot of work. Kyle's the boat expert, so I'm going to have him explain and show you what he's got going on. Yeah, so we'll take you through the process of how to install the gator step. But like Jeff said, so boating is just another thing that uh, my family likes to do in the summer. We've been doing that since I was a kid, and it's, uh, it's a fun way for the family to hang out and uh, enjoy each other all day long and fun in the sun. So um, a lot of people will, you know, if you have carpet in your boat, and at some point that carpet will wear out, or uh, maybe you're just tired of you go to the lake on Saturday, Sunday, you want to go back to the lake, and guess what? That carpet is still just sopping wet from the people that are in and out of the boat, from uh, tubing and skiing and, you know, just swimming, having fun at the lake. So the nice thing about this stuff is uh, it, it dries uh, very rapidly. It's water-resistant. It repels. Um, it's, it's pretty stain guard. Uh, it's comfortable when you kneel down onto it. So it's a very good product. Um, you'll see a lot of the newer boats, they are coming spec uh, with this product. So today we want to walk you through how you can put this in your boat. So let me clip this on here. There we go. That way I can be hands free. How you would start is uh, first you need a template to send Gator Step. This is something anybody can do. Don't be afraid. Don't think that you have to take this to one of those dealers to get it done uh, because this is my second boat doing it and uh, you too can make it look perfect. As you'll see in our uh, final pictures today, I promise you this will look perfect. Um, and a lot of that starts with the very first step, which is you, you get some of this. Um, this is just a small cutout for example, but uh, if you're doing a whole boat, you'll buy a much wider and longer sheet. That way, um, you know, again, you can do the whole boat. But for example, you will, you'll lay this in your boat and usually under that carpet is a, um, they call it like a no-slip, non-slip surface that, that is kind of uh, in the fiberglass. And you will lay this on the surface of your boat. You'll take your Sharpie and you'll trace exactly where you want that template to be, where you want the gator step to cover. Send that back to gator step. They're going to send you one of these paper cutouts, okay? You take your paper cutout and you lay it, everything back into place. And if it's perfect, Great, you don't have to do anything more. Check that one off the list. If it's not perfect, take your Sharpie, make some more edits on it, send it back. Now, um, we wanted to get this exactly right. And this is the first time Gator Step has done a Cobalt 262. So unfortunately, I didn't have a template that someone had already done and I could just say, yeah, send me the, the paper templates. Basically, someone might have done the hard work for you already, if you're lucky. If you're not lucky, you have to go through the steps that I'm talking about today. So uh, once you get it all narrowed down, you get your paper template, you like it, everything's done, you get your final product. That's this. Um, and from here, we're going to go through the install. So uh, what you want to do before you install, you want to clean the surface of your boat. Um, Jeff and I have been in and out of this thing a hundred times, right? Doing the, uh, doing the template, making the edits, making the changes. Um, and today we're gonna, we'll, we'll get in there, we'll take our shoes off, that way we're not tracking anything in. But when we're making the template for the uh, purpose of saving time, we just kept our shoes on. So the boat got absolutely filthy. Uh, I know a lot of folks will use um, Windex to clean it. And I know Gator Step recommends uh, acetone. 
So uh, use one of those or both, you know, do, maybe do it with Windex and follow up with a uh, second with acetone. And then your surface is completely uh, grease free, uh, dirt free, debris free. It's ready for you to install the product. Okay, so now we're ready to install our product. Our floor is prepped. Um, we have our gator step. And I've kind of laid everything out in there just to see if there was anything, you know, before you install it, you want to make sure there was nothing funky uh, from the manufacturer that uh, you're not going to like. Because if, if there's something you're not happy about, you need to let them know before you install it. Um, in this case, I think everything looked good on this, so we are ready to install. And essentially what you're going to do is you take your, uh, you know, you take your gator step. Um, let's say this is the boat, for example. We're going to place this right where we're happy with it. Let's say it's right there. We got it in place. You're actually going to take tape and you're going to tape half of this down, okay? So I would, I would tape along this edge, tape along this edge, tape along this edge. That would, that would stabilize the gator step so it can't move. And then I'm going to flip this edge over, score the back of this with a knife, just so I can peel off this 3M label. Then I would apply that back down, okay? Now this side would be stuck. Now I'm going to take my tape off, peel this side up, do the opposite. Boom, that piece is down. So you're going to see us doing this today inside the boat. It'll probably be in fast motion, but that's exactly what we're going to do with every single piece. Um, maybe quick tip on that is it's actually a good idea. You know, I kind of mentioned to score it um, uh, after you lay it down. It's probably a good idea to score it beforehand. So, for example, I'm just going to score this one in half. Just a light, very light pressure. You know, start with a sharp blade. It doesn't take much. You're just cutting a layer of film there. There we go. So we'll just peel that back a little bit. And we'll do the same thing with the other side. There we go. This piece is ready to go. All right. Well, uh, Jeff, it's time for uh, uh, us to get to it. Check us out. All right, we're inside the boat, and before we get started on laying the floor down, I wanted to show you a little bit of what I explained earlier. So uh, I'll have Jeff come down a little closer. So earlier I mentioned that um, the non-slip surface. So I don't know if you can see in the camera, but this has a little bit of grippiness to it. So when we were tracing with the Sharpie over that uh, thin, clear film, this is the edge that we would trace, okay? And this is what those templates were made of. And hopefully, this is exactly what our cutouts match. So as we lay these down, we will seek to um, line up with these, uh, cover all the non-slip, but also match against any other pieces that they're going to butt up against. So Jeff and I will do our best to make sure everything... Um, you know, is even and uh, um, flows into the next section good. We'll, we'll tape everything down, secure it. Then we'll start that process where we kind of peel them back, peel one side off, lay it down, and repeat the process throughout. So this is the bare surface we're starting with, and uh, you're about to see a finished product here pretty soon. Quick update. Um, we are about probably around two hours in. It's it's going great. We just have a few pieces remaining, uh, but I thought I'd give a quick update on how it's going, which I think you can see it's going great. But I wanted to share with you. So 
in front of you, this is the template guide, if you will. So each of these pieces is numbered. You know exactly where they go. Uh, you know, a little bit like a puzzle. They, most of them only go in one spot anyway. Um, but just strategically. So when we're laying out a piece, um, take, take, uh, take this cooler piece, for instance, or the ski lodge. Um, we will, you know, this one I'm sure that somewhere in here we did our back slice about halfway in. That way we could, you know, secure one side and then roll out the rest. But together, you know, I'm working from one end, Jeff's working from the other end. We're getting it as square as possible, making sure that our edges look good and we're even. Uh, our hinge isn't covered and that we have covered our latch you know, how we want it covered and we have it, the exposure that we want around the edges on both sides. Sometimes you're splitting the difference, uh, but once you get that, you know, put your knee on it, get some pressure on it to stabilize one side. You can use the tape to tape down the edges, uh, get one side secured, pull the other side back. And when you're peeling off this 3M, um, it works really well, you know, if you just peel it very slowly, okay? Don't, don't try to rip it, peel it slowly. The good stuff about this product, because it's a 3M product, uh, if you lay it down and you decide you don't like your positioning, you can take it back up. Now, I don't know how long that works for. I would say uh, you don't want to leave it down for any certain amount of time, but if you put it down and you don't like it, you can get it back up. We haven't had to do that with any pieces because the, the hard work is uh, what we didn't, we didn't make videos on when we made the templates. That's the hard work making sure you get your templates exactly how you want them. That way, when you get to the final step of actually laying down the product, everything falls into place very nicely. I would say overall, from a time frame perspective, uh, this might have taken probably around three months, but a lot of that time is really just the back and forth shipment. So uh, of templates where I'm making edits and working on each piece until I get it just how I want it. Uh, once you have everything perfect, you lock it in and say, we're ready to go to production to get your product. And this is what I'm talking about when, um, you know, checking your product when it does come in to make sure it's how you want it. So this piece back here actually goes on the swim deck. This is one of the early pieces that came in. And what did we notice right away? It has a quality issue. Uh, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but this cobalt actually runs downhill. Okay. Uh, the C is closer to the top than the T is. The T is running downhill. So this piece we saved. Um, Gator Step printed us a new piece and they did get that squared up. We're actually going to use this piece in the uh, engine bay. Um, I have a toolbox that I keep in there. So we're going to lay this in there. I think it'll be a nice touch. Perfect for the en engine bay. Still dresses it up. Uh, still is a good product to, uh, to make good use of somewhere. The other thing that I like about the Gator Step product that I didn't share earlier is the functionality of it. So, um, of course, yeah, it's got the non-slip, you know, it's not slick. Uh, on my last boat, uh, the, the swim platform that hangs over the water had a little bit of a slope to it. And when it would get wet, it was like a water slide. Um, the previous owner of the boat explained to me that that was an issue that they had with it and that someone had actually fallen and broken their ribs when they slipped. Now, I imagine there was some liquid encouragement involved with that, but I can also tell you that swim platform was very slick. Uh, so, you know, you get that non-slip surface, but again, the other thing I really like when you go from carpet to this product is you can make your cutouts for your latches. So now, you know, in the old times, I had to, you know, it had push button snaps. I'd have to take up my snaps to access my latch to open it. Now I can get to my ski locker, I can get to my cooler, I can get to other things, um, you know, close my breezeway without having to unsnap the carpet. Uh, like I said, on top of the other benefits of it dries out really fast, uh, the bottom, it doesn't deteriorate like carpet will over time. So things are going great and uh, see how this finishes out. More to come.
right, wanted to show you guys the final product. It is all installed. I think it looks great. Um, take a walkthrough. Um, so yeah, everything, we kind of strategically planned out how we would lay it down, and that is really starting with the easier stuff and working towards the more intricate stuff where everything has to tie together, uh, like the front. The front's two pieces, so we really started with this big piece on this side, made sure it was going to fit over our little hole here for the door, uh, and then work to square everything up. So if you're doing this, I would recommend the same thing. Pick, pick where um, you, you know it, you want it to look nice, and then work with it to get it to sit where you want. And then we put that next piece to it and worked our way back. Um, to the most difficult sections, there is a piece uh, inside the head here that was pretty easy, other than sometimes uh, kind of like working, if anyone's worked on a boat engine, you know sometimes that you have to stand on your head and look at bolts upside down because you just don't have the room. This piece in there was something like that just because there isn't a lot of room in there, but uh, it also makes it less critical. So uh, just having it in there, it does dress it up nice. And uh, like I say, we worked our way back. Uh, this is actually, let's see, one, two, these are three big pieces right here. So again, we started with the side that was going to be the most difficult because this piece runs from here all the way back to the boat. So we wanted to get that to where it sat nice going around the cooler and the edges along the boat. And then we worked our way um, towards the uh, starboard. So on a boat, you have your, your starboard and your port. Uh, so yeah, we were, again, looking at how difficult it was going to be, working from the hard side to the easy. That way, as you move towards the easier side, things just fit nicely because you already took the hardest part and completed it. Yeah, I am, uh, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I need to add that, uh, check out Gator Step. They have a lot of different colors with this product. You can, it doesn't just have to be boats. I know people are using it for boats, uh, whether it be for pleasure or fishing boats. Um, I'm not sure what all applications someone might want to use this for. I've seen toolboxes dressed up with them. Uh, there's a lot of different things. You there's different designs. This is a honeycomb. Um, we worked with Gator Step to, to do what we wanted for this look from, you know, we wanted it kind of bare up the middle, uh, some of the honeycomb on the side. So it's not overly busy, uh, but some of it does hide some of the lines too. And you can, you can pick different colors, whether it be the color on the inside or the color on the outside. They have a lot of options. It is a very usable product that also dresses it up nice. Uh, so check them out. If anyone has questions, put them down in the comments. We'd be happy to uh, help address those as best we can. You can always reach out to Gator Step 2. They're very helpful. Uh, but don't be afraid to take on a project like this. This really isn't that hard. It just takes a little bit of time from the beginning to the end. It is a process. So that's it for now. Until next time. Kyle, what's the name of your boat? Oh, yeah. Uh, great question, Jeff. So, uh, yeah, I always... That's a question I like to ask people, and uh, not just cars that should have names. You know, we have Larry T-Bird, uh, Big Green Machine. But this boat is uh, named American Pie. Um, it's named after the Don McLean song. Uh, just coincidentally, where we bought the boat uh, has, has ties back to where Buddy Holly last played his last uh, uh, concert was in Clear Lake, Iowa. And that's where this boat came from. So um, Don McLean's song starts off with a long, long time ago. He can remember when the music died. And he's referring to uh, Buddy Holly and, uh, oh gosh, who's the La Bamba guy? Um, All right, you have to ask this now. Uh, I'm going to know it as soon as, we, as soon as we finish here. But uh, Eddie Valens, or uh, um, Richie Valens. Richie Valens, yes, Richie Valens. Uh, and there was another famous uh, singer that, would have been on that plane that crashed, but I believe he lost a coin toss. And that is, um, that's going to bug me down too. Uh, what's it? Uh, anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll let you, you guys tell me. Someone probably knows. I wasn't around back then, but someone very famous that also was at the concert wasn't on the plane, and they had to take the bus to the next show. Um, and as we know, there was a bad storm, and those guys didn't make it very far in their flight. The American Pie song, I love it. It has a lot of different meaning to it. Um, if, if you're not familiar with that, go check it out. There's several, uh, probably 10-minute videos explaining all the different meanings behind that.
that song or what's believed to be the means behind that song. As we know, Don McLean's never officially shared that, but I think uh, a lot of folks like to dissect it and read between lines. American Pie, Gator Step, check this stuff out, guys. I think you'll like it. Have a good one. Okay, uh, it was bugging us. We had to look it up real quick. We, we had to know who was the other member that didn't get on the plane. The other one that was on the plane was the Big Bopper, also uh, deceased from that accident. But Waylon Jennings did not get on the plane for years. He felt guilty about, you know, the jokes that, that he had made with uh, uh, Eddie or um, Richie saying, you know, well, I hope you freeze on your bus. Well, I hope your plane crashes. We know the plane did crash. Uh, but Whalen felt guilty for years about saying that, even though we know that didn't really have anything to do with the plane crashing. But uh, he was, uh, Whalen Jennings was a balladeer for the Dukes of Hazard. So there you go, folks. Awesome tie. That's why we like the American Pie name. Next time. <laughs>